I tried BTD6's hardest challenge, except this time, rather than using all these towers, I just used a cannon. This is going to get insane, so stick around to make sure you know what happens. We're starting around 6, and we've already hit a problem. See, the first few waves are going to come fast, and the bomb shooter is slow. And if even one of these balloons manages to squeeze through, then this is going to happen. We're going to have to start all over again. To get past this first stage, we're going to have to micromanage our tower to make sure it's putting in the work, because even though we can get past round 6 without our help, we're going to lose to round 7. Just look at how close that came to getting through. On round 9, we've made enough money to upgrade to missile launcher. Except this might be the death of us, because apparently the missile launcher misses half its shots. Just look, what is it even doing? This new upgraded bomb tower will be able to get us to round 13 all by itself. But you may have noticed a problem, and that is that cannons can't see camo balloons. See, cannons have no way to see camo balloons by themselves, and that's why our hero comes in. Etienne is our saviour in this case, because when they upgrade enough, they allow all of our towers to see camo balloons, meaning this won't be a problem forever. Let's put her in this corner, and then she'll be able to help us pop these horrible balloons. As you can see, she's only currently got one drone, but later on in the video, Etienne is going to be the hero that gets her through this insane challenge. While our towers are easily holding back balloons, it's probably a good time to explain chimps mode. This mode is the hardest thing that BTD6 has to offer, with the main one being with no hearts, meaning that if any of these balloons manage to sneak through, it will be game over for us. We also have to contend with no income, no continues, no selling, meaning anything we buy is permanent, and most importantly, no monkey knowledges. These bonuses usually make the game so much easier, so without them, it's going to be a real challenge. Now it's round 15, and these balloons have started to get way too far down the track, and they're nearly killing us. To combat this, we're going to need more cannons. Squeezing a second cannon into this gap will allow for maximum damage, as each balloon has to pass through this point three times, meaning it'll have three shots of the balloon before they can escape. This cannon is going to serve a very important purpose. See, cannons are not only unable to pop camber balloons, but they also can't even pop black balloons. That is, unless we use this bottom path, shrapnel shots. This is going to cause darts to come flying out of a cannon and pop any black balloons in sight, saving us from an early grave. With this extra damage, we're going to make it all the way to round 21, where we can upgrade our cannon to a cluster bomb, meaning now it will essentially shoot 9 bombs out, causing massive damage. Not only that, but with heavy bombs, each bomb will be doing twice as much damage. Now I know what you're thinking, this sounds overpowered, but we need to start planning for the next big problem. See, balloons aren't the only thing coming from this game. Instead, blimps called Moabs are going to start appearing. And while this cluster will be great for small balloons, it's going to be no match for the Moab. To deal with this, we're going to need to upgrade our first cannon again to a Moab Mauler. While the cluster is perfect for small balloons, this Mauler is sculpted to deal high damage to any blimp that it sees, saving us once again. This is what you would think, except this won't be able to do enough damage by itself. Instead, we're going to need to upgrade it once again to a Moab Assassin. This will give us access to an insane ability that will shred through a Moab in an instant. And to activate it, we simply need to use this button here. Now it's time for round 40. A simple click of this button will turn that monstrosity into four measly ceramic balloons, allowing us to quickly move on to better things. That experience we've been waiting for has finally arrived, and now Etienne has allowed all of our towers to see cannon balloons. So those drones will no longer be fighting by themselves. Instead, the cannons can fight by this side, and just in time, because camo rainbows have just arrived, and whereas last round we could have easily died, instead we're shredding them to pieces. You might have noticed that we've started to rack up an insane amount of monkey cash. But that's because for our next upgrade, we're going to need 27,000. And with it comes instant death for Moabs everywhere, dealing instant damage six times more than before. With this comes incredible damage. I mean, just look at how fast that destroys those blimps. We've only been using two main paths for this Moab, but it's actually equipped with a third path, designed for stunning balloons in their track so that other towers can quickly destroy them. But this upgrade doesn't come cheap, as 60,000 cash, and that's after spending 5,000 on the previous upgrades. This is going to require some serious patience. I don't have that, so instead let's buy some more Moab Molars because we need some major defences if we're going to save up for that. Round 60 is going to be our next major problem, where a BFB is going to spawn, and once it's destroyed, four Moabs are going to pop out. We don't have enough defences to deal with that at the moment, which means even more Moab Molars are going to be necessary. By round 60, we have number four of these bad boys, and with that, the BFB should be caked. Simply launch the death missile at it, and watch the Maulers do the rest. Finally, when it pops, the cluster bomb will clean up any ceramics left, and that's round 60 down. It's time to start saving up for that third part we were talking about earlier. While we wait, why not subscribe and comment down below? It would really help me make a dream come true. And hey, if we reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'll give a random commenter something special. But only if there's more than 100 of you commenting down below. And every comment on any of my videos counts as an entry, so get commenting. Now, it's time for what used to be the hardest balloon in the game, the ZOMG. This blimp comes packed with 4,000 health to its name, so this balloon is no joke. Except it is for us. We're able to use our ability once again to instantly tear this ZOMG apart, 
revealing another four BFBs that we need to take care of. We've managed to take on way harder balloons than that, so within just a few seconds, we're on to the next round. It's round 81 now, we've saved up 45,000 cash, but now we're having problems. Tens of BFBs have shown up, which means either we need to spend more money, or use a special ability to survive. What I haven't told you is that heroes come equipped with special powers, meaning Etienne can save us with a drone, which fires rapid missiles at anything it sees on screen, saving us from the last wave of balloons that almost managed to squeak through our defences. Unluckily for us, that won't save us when it comes to round 82, and we're going to have to splash some cash on another cluster bomb to clean up the leaked balloons, otherwise we're going to have more balloons leaking through our defences like last round. Finally, we have enough money for our third path, and we'll be able to stun Moabs as they pass, except I'm an idiot and bought a bomb blitz. While this will be able to do massive damage to smaller balloons, the other path would have allowed even more damage to all balloons. Let's just hope this will be enough to make it through, otherwise I'm going to have to redo the whole thing all over again. Since I've managed to spend way too much money to ever be able to afford the stunning cannon, I need to spend the rest on upgrading Moab Assassins, giving us more abilities and even more damage to balloons. Hopefully giving us way more support to take on the later rounds, because trust me, we'll need it. It's time for the second hardest blimp in the game, a DDT. These things travel at the speed of light, and with armour like a lead balloon, and not only that, but they're invisible. Luckily for us, Etienne has that problem solved. With our abilities, this is no problem. We just need to spam and watch these DDTs fall, but we're going to have to get prepared, because there was only three this time, and with way bigger numbers coming up later, we're going to need even stronger defences if we want a chance. To take on the next few waves, we need to save our abilities for when they're needed most, because if we don't have our abilities up when the DDTs come, it's game over. We need to build up more maulers for more abilities, so next time they come, we can shoot even more missiles at them, dealing instant damage. Here they are, and here we go. Spam those abilities and watch those DDTs fall. They can't even make it around the first loop before our intense damage has sent them packing. And with that, we move on to the final stage of this run, with even harder balloons to come. To deal with these last few rounds, we need to spend every penny we earn on more Moab maulers, because soon, the hardest balloon in the whole of BTD6 is coming. And if we haven't managed to prepare properly, then this whole game will have been for nothing, and we'll have to repeat the entire thing. The bad is the biggest balloon of all, with 20,000 health, packed full of both DDTs and ZOMGs. This beast is not to be ignored. Many people have reached this stage, but very few have managed to survive its destruction. Finally, it's here. We have over 10 maulers to tackle this machine. With Etienne's drone firing on it at all times, and with access to so many abilities, firing every second we're taking out chunks of it health and we can see the damage being done. But will it be enough? There it goes, out come the ZOMGs and DDTs. Popping them just gives us BFBs to deal with, and we can easily take care of them. There it is, all 100 rounds of BTD6, with over 2 million pops and 2,000 mobs defeated. But that's not the end of it. Check out this video here, where I battle BTT6's hardest boss, the real hardest blue in the game. Or click here to see how far I can get with just dark monkeys. And if you want to see more from me, make sure you subscribe and like the video.